We'll begin in Kaduna State, which has come under several attacks by terrorists during the week. The latest is the invasion of another community in Chikun local government area of the state by rampaging terrorists, killing two persons, injuring others, and kidnapping an unspecified number of persons. Community members told TVC News that the terrorists came in large numbers, shooting sporadically before invading the area. Lupe Assam reports. Another brazen attack by terrorists in Kaduna, the fifth in five days. This time, the assailants attacked a community in Chukun local government area, and about 15 houses were invaded. Several persons were kidnapped, including a pastor and a retired police officer. Others who were shot have been confirmed dead. You get to know two people are killed for now. About uh, four of them are in the hospital receiving treatment. Because for now, for now, the numbers we can be able to gather, they are about 15 years about. The attack comes four days after terrorists bombed the Kaduna-bound train, killing eight persons and kidnapping others. Residents of the community expressed disappointment at the inability of the government to stem the surge of killings and kidnappings. Christians are dying. Muslims are dying. Let Buhari come and say something about the killing in Kaduna State. It has to stop. Government are no longer trained to us. So what we need in this area is self-defense. If the government can be able to recruit like 100 youth, even without paying us, at least as a voluntary soldiers, they should give up and we are going to face these people. Meanwhile, the governor is set to brief the president on the recent happenings in the state. But he's also calling for extreme actions against the bandits. He feels there is no better time to bomb terrorists out of existence. And the problems of banditry and terrorism in the Northwest far outweigh what we are seeing or we have seen ever in the Northeast. And it is time for the Nigeria Air Force and the Army to bomb these terrorists out of existence. With the declaration by the Federal High Court that these bandits are terrorists, nothing stops the military, the police, and other security agencies to take an extreme action to terminate these bandits without prejudice. We apologize for our inability to protect everyone. The governor has also promised to ask the president to deploy more security personnel and equipment into the state. Lupe Assam, TVC News, Kaduna. To walk us through the rise in insecurity across the country is retired group captain Sadiq Shehu, who joins us live from our Abuja studios. Thank you for joining us on TVC News at 7. As it is, Governor El Rufai has emphatically declared that the terrorists should be bombed. But as we know, it's not the first time this call, uh, a call like this will be coming from a government official. But along the line, you just find out uh, there are some lapses and then it's even worse than in the beginning. What would you prescribe as solutions? Hello, good evening. Good evening, sir. Yes, uh, the myriad of security problems that are facing our dear country have solutions that should come from uh, different stakeholders. First on the line, whenever anything goes wrong, and uh, maybe uh, rightly so, are the security agencies. When I use the security agencies now, I mean the whole gamut of military, police, paramilitary, um, uh, intelligence agencies. They are the people that people look up to because it is their mandate to provide security and safety. However, these agencies are operating under a democratic dispensation, whereby well, like what obtains during a uh, military dispensation, they are subservient to civilian authority, civilian political masters. It is these political masters that will ensure the composition, equipping, budgeting, training that is given to these agencies is enough for them to carry out the mandate that the political masters will give them. Where you have either failure from the security agencies themselves or failure of oversight or failure of funding from the political masters. And the political masters here, we have two branches that are, you know, that are this, both the executive branch and the legislative branch. These two branches have a lot to do and it's a shared responsibility. I emphasize shared responsibility because again, Due to our, you know, foray into military rule, there's tendency, either admitted or not, 
of the uh, legislature to think that the running anything to do with security, anything to do with military, is only for the executive branch. Here, I beg to differ. In fact, the, uh, the, the, in, in, in developed democracies, the legislature should be the one that should hold the security agencies accountable. I do not see that happening, either because of uh, fear that maybe this is not our, our terrain, or lack of capacity, because let's be honest, the military or the security agencies, whether we like it or not, it's like, uh, I don't want to use the word, maybe negatively, it's like a cult. It's an anything. If you want to penetrate to know how they operate, what they need, what they have, what they lack, sometimes it is going to be difficult if you are looking from outside into the inside. So maybe sometimes it's lack of capacity, sometimes it's lack of understanding, because I see sometimes the legislature, you know, giving away their, 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 their constitutional right to really play a role on how our security agencies work into the so the solution lies in myriad and again at the personal and community level we also have a role i am playing my role here we all have a role to play in ensuring that security like we say is everybody's decision of course to a lesser extent than the people that are paid to provide security than the people that are paid to oversight the security agencies but the average nigerian the average community in nigeria they also have a role to play, either by informing, either by keeping your eyes open, either by even complaining when you see something wrong. Because it is your taxpayers' money that is being used, whether it is for military, whether it is for police, whether it is for custom or civil defense. It is the taxpayer that feels the brunt. It is the taxpayer's life and his property that's at stake. So you see, every, all the solutions we are looking for will come from all these sectors. It is not one sector. If everybody plays his role, we'll get where we are going to. All right. You spoke about political masters and uh, the need for checks and balances being carried out by the different arms of government. We know there have been instances where members of the legislature actually invite members of the executive for questioning about the state and the state of insecurity in the country. Well, let's talk at this moment about uh, interventions. Governor Arofa on one hand is talking about military bombing the hideout of uh, the bandits and doing that simultaneously. Do you think military intervention alone can actually walk us through this uh, conundrum we are in? Okay, the first question I answered, I told you the role that different segments of the society and the government have to play. So certainly it is not only a military or security task. There are other elements that need to come in. But permit me to, you touched me, you touched me where you said uh, the National Assembly, they used to intervene and call the security agencies to come to task. With due respect, with uh, close to 30 years in military service before I, I retire, and uh, as somebody, as the work I do now, from uh, confirmation of minist ministers of defense or minister of interior to the questioning of service chiefs, to be honest with you, I see us playing a joke. Because it starts from there. It starts from there. This, the National Assembly is supposed to assist the president. The president is supposed to make a good selection in the first place. Where he asks, or where due to some circumstances he didn't make, the check and balance that is inherent in democracy comes in during the confirmation stage. But for the legislature to do proper confirmation, you need to be knowledgeable about how the police uh, operate how the police is equipped, how the police is uh, organized. You need to do background research about the people that are being presented. Unfortunately, I do not see our legislators doing that. I am from Sokoto State. If I am being appointed as a Minister of Defense from Sokoto State, before I even come, the legislators uh, um, um, from House of Representatives, from this, they have gone around and campaigned for me to just come and take a bow and go. I don't think that is the work of a legislator. The work of a legislator, like I say, is check and balance. The executive might make a mistake or he might overlook something. That thing should be, I mean, the, 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 the high quality uh, legislative work should, uh, you know, bring out that fault or that gap where it exists. I do not see that happening. So in all honesty, right from how we select people that we place in this thing, uh, and uh, it's not a condemnation of the people appointed, but the problem is that you need to do a rigorous research. And if you are a member, with due respect, if you are a member of the uh, House of Representatives Committee on Defense and you are in your former life, you are, a, you are a, 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 I mean a, a journalist or you are a doctor, certainly nobody expects you to be conversant in military matters as to ask the service chiefs pertinent questions. 
It is possible through platinum question you will discover somebody who will not be able to perform. But you come, you don't have anything. All you are looking is that uh, the legislative that comes from the same state with the with the appointee has come and campaigned for you. So mm. it's like rob my back, I rob my back. If I, right. I want, I always challenge our legislators. Let them play a clip. All right, you have I'm, made uh, uh, your uh, point. Uh, I strongly in believe. In the, in the, in the Retired country. Group Captain yes, Salik Shehu, former Air Chief Officer, thank, Air Force Officer, rather. Thank you very much for joining us on TVC News at seven.